sticking around to the last session of the day to those in the room and to those on the live stream, the tens of thousands of people that are currently watching. Actually, there's a decent amount between the two streams and, uh, and the recorded video, of course. So um, we're going to learn about a very important topic, probably the most important topic you can possibly learn today. And that's about the uh, open JDK project and community. Because it's where the magic happens. Everything that you've learned today in the keynotes, um, in the uh, various sessions, um, they come from all of the innovations and technologies going into the Java platform. And most, if not almost all of those, happen, are created, thought through, designed, implemented as part of open JDK. So I like to say it's where the magic happens. Um, this presentation is going to talk about um, OpenJDK, why you should care, uh, what it is, because you know we still we hear quite often that um, there's some misconceptions about what exactly it is, uh, how you can participate, and then we're going to go through a pretty cool example of participation in action. So somebody from the community who found, um, I would say, an, an issue inside the JDK. Um, but then as this person was peeling back the onion, they discovered that it actually proliferated across a bunch of areas of the JDK. Um, and so we're going to look at a polar crust live. Live with all of its uh, potential flaws. So why should you care? Well, Java's everywhere. Um, it's used by millions of developers. As Stephen O'Grady from uh, Red Monk said, Java has shown a remarkable ability, ability to adapt to a rapidly changing landscape. It's a language that would be difficult to bet against. Um, in fact, JDK 20 was announced and launched today. Well, we've known about it for some time because we do these things like clockwork every six months in March and September. Uh, but still, it's really, really a proud day to launch a new version of Java. It's been at the top of Hacker News all day long. I don't know why that's a badge of honor or a sense of pride. Uh, maybe it's just me because I work in a, in a DevRel group. So we read Hacker News all day long so that you know, everyone else doesn't have to. Um, but in any sense, I like to say that Java is, it really runs a large portion of the world's economy. It really, truly does. So the flights that you took, the trains that you took, the banking, well, you know, banking is a little up in the air at the moment. But we can still get our money out. When you take your money out, you know, a lot of that is processed by uh, Java on the back end. Uh, the messages that you send on your phone, um, the games that you play, all of these things, the systems that you find yourself in, they, they're all, many of them are built in Java. And in the last uh, five years, we've been releasing new versions of Java like clockwork every six months. There's been 11 releases. The 11th release was today, uh, JDK 20. And we're going to have to, you know, change the theme of this slide pretty soon because we're running out of space. Uh, but the message here is that we're very, very consistent on time, March and September, um, you know, like, like clockwork. And that changed. Um, prior to the six-month release cadence, we were on a much longer release cadence. It was a little bit of a, uh, you know, we'd aim for two years, but we'd usually end up around three to four years. Um, so this is a, a much faster way to get new features into your hands. And a lot of this is thanks to OpenJDK. And the hard work that the team has done to evolve OpenJDK to a point where we could release very naturally and very smoothly. If you'll notice, uh, you know, a bunch of people from the Java team are here today presenting in our session today. And the reason that they're here on launch day is because it's a smooth process to launch new versions of Java as opposed to the way it might have used to be where it was sort of all hands on deck. Um, the sentiment is rising again. I actually took us a brief snapshot of uh, the Hacker News post, Java 20 is out. It's probably got more points now, but it was number one for a large part of today. Um, and there's a bunch of great feedback. If you read uh, in the forums, uh, you see pretty, pretty positive sentiment. And it's all made possible by OpenJDK, and that's why we're here talking about it. OK, but we need your help. Um, in fact, if you saw George's uh, presentation this morning, he showed a slide that showed the contributions from the different companies in the ecosystem as part of OpenJDK. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of great companies, Oracle likes to you know, make sure that we show up and do a large part of the work. But the second largest box were individual contributors that don't, um, aren't registered with a particular company. And that's the first time that it's been the second largest box. So that's because of you know, my presentation and the work that I do. Okay, 
I can hear the laughter on the live stream. Um, all right, so what is it? Um, OpenJDK is the place where we collaborate on the build of the open source implementation for Java. Uh, Java SE and related projects. So some people say it's a thing, it's a distribution, it's a community, it's a project. Well, it is the place where we collaborate on all of those things. Um, so you'll, you'll see sort of the OpenJDK project, uh, OpenJDK community. Those are all sort of sub pieces of what OpenJDK is. And the website is openjdk.org, um, which recently changed from openjdk.java.net, which you'll still see that hanging on to some slides, even in today's presentations. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, OpenJDK is where Java is built. Um, it's made up of a couple of components. There's more to it than this, but I'm just going to highlight some of the main themes. Uh, groups, projects, mailing lists, wikis, and JDK enhancement proposals, or JEPs. Um, it's stewarded and maintained by Oracle. Uh, we're the largest contributor, but there are many, many contributors, as I mentioned earlier, and a large um, uh, volume of individual contributors as well. The aim of OpenJDK is to steward the platform forward, to evolve it in a way that's thoughtful, methodical, um, transparent, um, in a way that prepares Java for problems that developers have to face both today and well into the future. So that's the goal of OpenJDK. And we do that in a way that evolves the platform, um, where once something becomes final in the platform, it's going to be there for a very, very long time. It's done right, and it feels like Java. So it doesn't feel like something where we reacted to a trend or a fashion and it's bolted on the side of the platform. And then a couple years later, that trend or that fashion is you know, no longer fashionable. Suddenly, you've got this thing hanging on that hundreds of thousands of developers depend on. We have to be very, very careful. So some people say, why do you move so slow? We say we move carefully and thoughtfully. And we watch carefully what works and what doesn't. Um, there's a high bar for contributing. So it's not like anybody can come in and just say, hey, I've got this great code. It's a great idea. Here you go. However, we do welcome participation from the community. And it relates to the JCP, where the JCP maintains uh, the specification and conformance test suite for Java uh, SE. So that's the role of the JCP. And you can learn more about um, the stewardship at the link at the bottom. OK, so groups and projects are kind of the main entities of OpenJDK. Uh, you have groups, which are you know, basically just what it sounds like. It's a group of people who are interested in a, a particular common interest. Um, so examples of that would be you know, compiler team interested in com uh, compilation, hotspot on the JVM, security. We heard a presentation earlier um, from um, Brad and, um, and uh, Francis, thank you, on uh, the security. They, they, they form the security group, and there's a networking group. In fact, I think there's a Duke project, so not a Duke group. What is, does anybody know? Who sponsors the Duke project? Hotspot? <laughs> Nobody knows. Um, OK, Duke is the little figure at the top right um, who has been the kind of caricature of, of Java for a uh, mascot for a very long time. And then, um, so groups sponsor projects, and then there are roles, member and lead. Um, projects are the collaborative effort to produce a specific artifact. So I mentioned Duke because I sort of say it in jest, but you know, the artifact that the Duke project um, is Duke you know, animations or Duke graphics. But there, you know, there's very important ones as well, like uh, JDK, which is where we uh, maintain the current mainline. Today, it's JDK 21. Uh, and then there's a JDK updates project that maintains um, long-term or other versions of Java. Uh, and then Amber Loom which you've heard about today, Panama, et cetera, are all uh, projects. Um, projects are made up of mailing lists, wikis, um, source code repositories, Duke collections of Duke images, et cetera. And then there, the, there's roles, which we'll talk about, uh, I believe, in, in a slide or two. Um, I'm not going to talk about governance too much, but you, know, you have to have a governing board to ensure that you maintain a set of rules uh, that, you, that you abide by. Um, and so the governing board has five members. The chair is appointed by Oracle. There's a lead. Uh, and then there's um, some uh, uh, OpenJDK members. You can find the bylaws. This is a screenshot of it that's at openjdk.org slash bylaws. Uh, they do not have, oh, the, the governing board doesn't have sort of power over the work that goes into projects or the outcome. Um, it really just makes sure that it, it maintains a healthy community um, by set of the bylaws. Uh, mailing lists. 
This is a screenshot of a typical mailing list. Uh, I believe this is Amber Dev. Yes. Um, you know, there's uh, quite a bit of activity in here. You can sort it a number of different ways. All of the work that goes into Java happens, you know, this discussed through the mailing list. So, you know, people don't like go behind closed doors, think of a great feature, and then, you know, here you go. Here's the code, the implementation, and everything. Like the design discussions, the meetings, a lot of that happens through the mailing list. So you can go back and you can see. In fact, on the Hacker News thread today, somebody said, you know, why didn't you just do it this way? And I think they were referring to something from Amber about guarded patterns that you talked about in your um, talk today. And somebody from the community pointed out, well, this is why. And they pointed back to the mailing list that discussed that exact reason why they didn't do the double ampersand instead of the when for guarded um, patterns. And so it's all right there. It's actually very nice and natural. We believe that builds trust um, in the way that the platform is developed. Um, Open JDK, just a quick snapshot of the numbers. This is a screenshot from a couple of days ago um, from GitHub slash OpenJDK slash JDK, which is the main line. Um, and you can see there's a lot of activity in that, uh, in that repo. And this is just one of many repos that are part of OpenJDK. Um, there's 188 author authors in the past 30 days. Um, I think there's more than 1,107 people in, as accounts in OpenJDK. I think that number is maybe six months old. Uh, roughly 20 groups and roughly 75 projects is, is the number. Um, I said I'd talk about roles. Roles uh, give you some uh, power to do something within the community. Um, they sort of specify what you can do. A general theme is you go from author to committer to reviewer, and maybe someday you can become a project lead. It becomes harder and harder to get to the next role. You know, basically, it's like you got to show up and do the work. You got to prove yourself. Um, and then show that you can make many you know, changes that are accepted and you eventually can become uh, a project lead yourself where you, you recommend a project and, and work on that. Uh, JDK and JDK updates project. These are some of the larger projects as part of OpenJDK. Um, JDK is the repo that I showed as part of that GitHub uh, screenshot. Um, it's always open for development. It's basically the main line. It's the tip. It's where a lot of the development is currently happening in 21 and you know, going into the future. Um, and then what happens is, uh, you know, basically freezes and it moves into a JDK updates project that's sponsored a project led by Rob McKenna. Uh, and there's a bunch of details to how that work that are probably beyond the scope of this, of this talk. But that's generally how the sort of work in the JDK um, happens. Uh, JDK 20, this is the release in action, which we just released. The notable thing here is that, uh, you can see at the bottom there's a schedule. It goes through a, a series of ramp down phases, um, which, and then it goes into an RC, a release candidate phase. So basically what that means is it gets a little bit harder and a little bit harder for something to make it into a release because eventually you need to freeze it before it goes GA, which for JDK 20 happened to be today. You'll see March 21st uh, at the bottom. And then you'll see uh, JSR 395, uh, which was the uh, JSR that specified the uh, JDK 20 as part of the JCP process. Okay, and then I mentioned uh, projects. So these are a set of the projects in uh, Open JDK. These are not all of the projects, but you know these are some of the sort of more active projects that we tend to talk about, particularly because they are either you know currently releasing things to the JDK, um, you know have big, lofty, ambitious goals. Um, I won't talk about each of these in too much detail. Uh, you, we've heard about some of them today, particularly Panama uh, and Loom and Amber. Uh, but you know, at a high level, Panama uh, aims to make it easier for the Java platform to interface with native code and off-heap memory. So think about things like uh, machine learning, data science. Even if you go to something like the NumPy repo in GitHub, you'll see that like 40 to 50% of that's actually C code. And so, um, Panama really aims to make it much easier to interface with, uh, with code that's written native. A lot of AI and ML stuff is done that way. People tend to think that Python has somehow dominated the world for AI and ML, and certainly they've done a great job, or the community has done a great job. But a lot of the hardcore intensive code is written in C and C++. Um, and so uh, that's, that's part of Project Panama. 
Valhalla is um, taking advantage of modern hardware by um, improving the way that we lay out objects in, in memory. Um, so that's a quite ambitious project that, that has you know, been going for many years. If we knock on wood, we might see something from Valhalla very soon. Panama uh, is in a second preview. Loom just released a second preview. Loom is about high concurrent applications, millions of virtual threads that are automatically handled by the JVM uh, on top of uh, carrier threads or operating system threads. Amber has been continuously delivering to the language, uh, making it more concise, removing boilerplate, uh, making it more expressive, uh, and moving it towards a world where we're thinking about data-oriented programming. Uh, and that's Amber. Leiden is about addressing startup time uh, and getting applications faster to peak performance. So sort of giving developers the option to sort of say what the trade-offs are to get to this sort of panacea of instant startup time for Java applications. Um, that's Leiden. And then ZGC is a uh, low latency garbage collector across very, very large heaps, like multiple terabyte heaps, sub-millisecond uh, pause times. So those are projects within OpenJDK. And so let's talk about how you can participate. One of the um, main ways is you want to listen to the conversations. You want to sort of hear what's happening. You want to see where these projects are. Um, and a great place to start are the mailing lists. And then you can engage. Um, the, the, you can try out preview features. So uh, much of the JEPs, many of the JEPs in Java 20 are actually in different stages of preview. Um, and a great way to get involved is just by using them. They get shipped with the JDK, um, and so you can use them. Did they work great? Awesome. Tell us. Go to the mailing list and say, I use this feature. I tried out you know, virtual threads, um, and they work amazing. There was this edge case where I saw some sort of you know, memory spike or something, or the CPU got pinned. Let us know. Those types of things are really, really, uh, really useful. Um, generally, once something's made it to a preview, it's not something that's going to be you know, completely overhauled or redesigned, generally. I mean, you know, we reserve the right to do that. Um, but you know, we're really looking for sort of that last mile feedback from areas that we may not have quite looked at. Um, quality outreach program is another way. So if you are the maintainer or author of a library or framework, we have the quality outreach program. Um, actually, I have a whole slide on that, so I'll hold off. Code reviews, and then, of course, contributing ideas and, and code through the mailing list um, is another way. You can also review um, PRs in GitHub. Uh, we're going to walk through one at the end. Here's an, uh, an example of some mailing lists, JDK dev, hotspot dev, core libs, class, class library dev, compile dev, amber loom, et cetera. Um, another way to sort of see some of the information, if you don't want to dive too deep into the mailing list themselves, is the um, DevRel team at Oracle tries to aggregate sort of the signal, uh, more of the signal. Not that the other stuff is noisy, but it tends to be pretty busy. Um, and we try and aggregate it into inside Java, where you can get sort of a reverse chronological order uh, of content that's developed by the team that works on Java. And we organize it by tag and author, so we try to make it very easy to discover what you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in compiler stuff, or maybe you're interested in JVM. Maybe you're interested in language. This is the place to go. Testing out early access builds, and as I mentioned, preview features. So that's uh, a great way to get involved. Those are the JEPs, uh, the seven JEPs from Java 20. And then I mentioned, uh, I've mentioned the preview, uh, preview features in action a couple of times. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but this is Project Amber. So a couple concepts here. Uh, you'll see the features that have delivered from Project Amber on the left side. Um, and then if we go across the other axis, you'll see you know, Java 10 through 20. Um, and then you'll see where each of those features got uh, introduced. Most of them, obviously, as a preview feature. That means they're almost complete, but we still you know, want to make, make sure that we've gotten the last amount of feedback. And then they go through a second preview. And our intention was usually to try and standardize it or make it a final feature within a year. Uh, but um, sometimes it takes a bit longer. One of the reasons that pattern matching for switch is taking a bit longer is because it has you know, close ties to record patterns. Record patterns is still moving a little bit. So we want to make sure that before we finalize something, we've made sure that all the different pieces of the JDK it works with are also moving towards a final uh, status as well. But we love feedback uh, definitely at any of the stages of preview would be, would be awesome. 
Um, so the quality outreach program designed around the Java 7 time, um, one of the reasons was there was a bug that was discovered in Lucene, I believe it was Lucene, Apache, um, five days before Java 7 was published. Michael's nodding his head like he remembers this. Um, and so uh, as you can imagine, especially, I mean five days even now, we would be like ready to release this thing and everybody would be calm, that would be bad. Uh, but five days back then, I think uh, when it was you know three years in the making or something like that with Java 7, was a pretty big deal, and that affected a lot of people. So we created the quality outreach program to ensure that stuff like that didn't happen. We want a tighter relationship with people who maintain libraries and frameworks in the ecosystem. So that's a way to have direct contact with the engineers that are working on the JDK, um, ensuring that they're seeing all of the changes as they go in, and we're kind of keeping them up to date with things that are coming so that we can ensure we don't see sort of a last minute regression uh, issue in, in these things. Um, yeah, okay, so that's just another slide on that. And you can get to that through inside.java slash quality is, uh, yeah, is a page that we aggregate a bunch of content there. Uh, I've got a couple slides here. I'm going to skip through fairly quickly. Um, becoming a con contributor, you know, if you do get to the point where you contribute code, we have a standard OCA that everybody signs, and there's a developer's guide um, that you should definitely check out. Uh, it gives you sort of the, the, the rules of the road to understand um, the best way to contribute code and, and all of that. You can see that in the openjdk.org slash guide. It's a great place to start. Um, you can download the source code directly from GitHub. Setting up your, your workspace is fairly straightforward thanks to Project SCARA, another OpenJDK project. The focus of that was moving the repo from Mercurial to Git and then from uh, Git to, well, and then onto GitHub. And there's a set of tooling that SCARA provides um, that makes it very easy to be a, a developer uh, in OpenJDK on the JDK project. So um, those are some instructions to try out the, the source code yourself. Some more information on building the JDK. I won't go into too much detail here. Uh, chest, chest testing for regression test with uh, JT Red, Reg. Uh, IDEs all should have support to run and build the JDK inside of them. So IntelliJ, NetBeans, um, VS Code, et cetera. And I think this is actually another area where we could potentially use contributions as well. So um, ensuring that there's IDE support to work on the JDK itself. Uh, and then of course, ideas in code. Um, while most people do think about contributing as code, um, contributions do come in, in many forms. So just pointing out problems that you had are, is extremely, extremely helpful and useful. Remember I mentioned that Lucene issue, um, you know, the quality outreach program is great to work directly with the maintainers of the libraries, but if you're a Lucene user and you had been trying it with the early access builds, we could have and maybe have discovered that sooner. So those are the types of things where you can get a lot of street cred for helping out there. Um, okay, so how do you communicate feedback that you may have? I've mentioned a bunch of these, mailing lists, um, write a blog post. If it's, if it's a good one and you're discovering something, it will surely make its way to us in some form or fashion. Um, you can give a conference talk on your experiences. There's a lot of people on the conference circuit right now talking about their uh, experiences with Project Loom. A lot of excitement around that. Uh, and then of course Twitter. Um, and uh, you can reach any, any of us through OpenJDK or at Java. Um, and let us know. So we, we're, we're always open to hear from you. Um, and then one thing is, you know, be prepared to think about it. You know, oftentimes someone comes in and says, hey, did you think about this? And, and the reality is most of the time we did think about that. It doesn't mean you shouldn't come say something, but you know, just sort of be pre prepared for that. Um, it, it's, we, we like to think it's a pretty friendly community and a welcoming community. Um, if anybody finds, uh, thinks differently, please let us know so that we can make sure we continue to optimize the experience as part of OpenJDK. Okay, um, I, how much time do I have? Does anybody know? Three forty. Do I have ten more minutes? Twenty minutes. Excellent. That should be enough time. Okay. Let's look at um, something in action. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, pull request seven nine two eight method for pre-sized hash map. Um, thank you, Stuart. You're going to get a call out in this one. Um, 
So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what exactly is uh, how this all works, because the guy that wrote all of this is sitting about 10 feet from me. Uh, not, he, didn't, he didn't actually do the original PR. That was somebody from the community. That's the cool thing about this PR. Um, but you know, the way that it works for hash maps, uh, it, you know, that's his section. But um, so basically, if you want to store 10 things into a hash map, um, you have to size the table bigger than 10 to make sure they don't get collisions. Um, and the way that that happens is generally behind the scenes. You know, the JVM, uh, all this takes care of most of that for you. Um, and so there was some code in there that sort of automatically sized the size of the table based off the number of elements or based off the way that you, that you wanted to create that hash map. Um, it's surprisingly subtle. Uh, you know, the magic number is generally 0 0.75. I'm assuming it's still 0 0.75 because that's, I think that's actually maybe hard coded in there. Um, you can store about 0 0.75 times the table, table, table number elements without collision. Um, and so there's a bunch of places in the JDK. Like when I say JDK, I mean in the Java platform, not somebody's application, that did it wrong. And that's interesting. Um, and so somebody came along and said, did I skip a slide? Sorry, let me just make sure I didn't skip a slide. OK, so somebody came along and they, they said, uh, hey, I'm seeing some unexpected behavior. And by the way, this person had come, this person, had, like, I'm not even sure anybody knows this person personally. They're somebody you know, out there in the community who has just been sort of banging on the JDK, looking for things to possibly contribute, and said, I, know, I noticed this weird behavior. So if we look at this code here, uh, I, it, this is basically, I pulled this directly from uh, the code on the, I guess the left side of the slide, directly from the code that this person had sent to the mailing list, which was, I'm going to create four hash maps. And I'm basically going to do it uh, four different ways. And then I'm going to print the size. I'm going to find the size of the array or the table on that. And, and I'm going to see what that looks like. And so they created hash map A, hash map B, hash map C, hash, hash map D. And A they created just by doing a new hash map and then filling it. I didn't include fill 12, but basically it just puts 12 elements in it. It's not very complicated. Um, and then hash map B, they actually passed in an initial capacity. So if you look at the uh, Java docs for hash map, if you pass in that value, it's the initial capacity that you want of the, uh, of the hash map. And then they filled it. And then they created a third one, and they did that using uh, A. And then they created a fourth one, D. And then they used D, uh, D dot put all A. So they basically used the uh, method put all uh, to, to do that, map dot put all. And then if you look at the top right, they ran this, and they got this output, A, B, C, D. And what you'll notice is 16, 16, 32, 32. So something in the hash map was resizing a table to 32 and not 16. Now 32 is obviously, if you, you know, it's all the same number of elements. They all have 12 elements. But the proper size you would think would have been 16. So they looked a little bit further and they said, it's a little bit small here. Yep, I think something is wrong. Uh, I'm going to, here's. I'm going to try and generate a pull request. Is anybody interested? And this is a series of emails that somebody had discovered, and they sent to um, maybe Corelibs. Yeah, Corelibs Dev, uh, and and this. So then, uh, you know, and that's where Stuart comes in. He said, uh, "I'm not sure where you ended up in this succession of messages because the person sent about eight messages as their brain was working through this problem." Um, but I do think that there are some things that are worthy of discussion and possibly fixing. And then the email is longer, uh, but then it says, there are a variety of places around the JDK that use a similar expression in order to precise hash maps. OK, so um, Stuart from the Corelibs team basically said, this is interesting. Let's continue this conversation. I think you may have found something here. Um, I'm going to skip the root of the issue here for just a moment. But uh, I'm going to skip to the result, and then we're going to walk through the PR a bit. So the result, actually, no, let's not do that. Let's, let's go right to the, uh, let's go right to this. Um, hopefully, you can see this. So this is PR uh, 7928. And the author of that PR is, <clears throat> I don't know how to say this, Zeno Ames? Is Zeno Ames in this room right now? OK, cool. Um, so if you look through this PR, the conversation is quite long, and the story is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit longer than this one, but this is sort of the simplified version. Um, this person went in, and uh, I'm going to just walk through. It's pretty long, 
but basically said, hey, you know, Stuart, here's the PR that I think we're going to try and fix this thing. And so um, a, a label was automa auto automatically added to Core Libs, which brought in a set of reviewers. So this is where Project Scar, or the magic of Project Scar, comes into place. And so some reviewers got added. And then um, Zen OMS said, I'm going to benchmark this, but we're going to skip that because that was a little bit of a side tangent with performance. But then we'll see something called re Web Revs. Now, this is an auto-updating message here that gets updated so that we don't pollute the PR with like a 1,000 different web revs that gives you all of the different places where code was changed. So I could click here. I don't know how good my connection is. But we can see you know, this is where this person went in and said, ah, oh, hashmap.new hashmap. So this is the exact one of the exact places where the, the code was changed. But there's a lot of those, so I'm not going to go through them. And then um, this person provided some tests cases. OK, that's great. Now we're going to keep moving on. Somebody else jumped into the conversation. Uh, some people from the team showed up to review the code. So um, uh, some people from Oracle. Chris Haggerty came in and said forward slash CSR. What that means is uh, Chris basically said, OK, this is starting to span a bunch of different areas that are going to be a potential specification change. So we need to make sure that we have a CSR in place. Um, and then Zen OMS said, oh, and then, said, and then Chris said, this is a really nice addition, you know, blah, blah. And then Zen OMS said, I actually have no idea how to do a CSR. That's where the team helped this person through. Um, Stuart said, I'll sponsor the PR. So he created the, the CSR himself. So Stuart did a, a lot of help work here. Um, and then you can see the, uh, here we've got the spec basically starting to flesh out for what a new, a new hash map function would look like to, to basically make it so that we can make this change across a, bu a bunch of different places in the JDK. And when I say a bunch, I mean probably 20 or 30, if not more, places in the, across the whole platform where you know, sort of coming up with their own way of sizing hash maps. And so um, this person created, working with Stuart, started to flesh out what that looked like. And then um, here's a bunch of more commits based off that. OK, so OpenJDK bot is saying um, it's not integrated. So this is more of the SCARA tooling that's helping out. Um, if we keep moving, we've got a ways to go. So I'm going to go pretty quickly. Um, Stuart drafted the CSR. Please review. So this was in bugs.openjdk.java.net. Um, OK, so then Alan Bateman comes in. Alan Bateman is one of the architects that you know, has a, just a, I mean, an impressive amount of knowledge across the entire platform and said, this is a patch that touches many parts of the JDK. Is this just for illustration, or you, do you actually, actually want to contribute this code? And ZenLMS said, well, I, I want to contribute this code, but I don't want to put in you know, 50 issues. And so Alan said, Maybe we should get some other reviewers involved because this is going to span a bunch of different areas. So we recalculated the labels, and a bunch of labels were added. And this is, again, some of the SCAR tooling. So these labels all came in, which then notified a bunch of teams on the JDK side to get involved and review this. OK, so you can sort of see where I'm going with this. We have somebody who came in from the community and said, huh, I saw something interesting, maybe you should check this out. And we've kind of snowballed into there are, it's touching almost every part of the, of the uh, platform itself. Now, I think Stuart said maybe we should rein this in a little bit and let's narrow. So what ZenOMAS did is pull out some of those changes to try and scope this to uh, a, a more limited space so that we could get reviewers in here. And I'm going to skip a bunch of this. Um, Alan reviewed, Stuart reviewed, and said the CSR is now approved. Regarding the load factor, 0 0.75, OK, a bunch of discussion about how that should be done. This is where Stuart says, let's remove these areas because we want to stay sort of into a tighter group of people because it would have just gotten out of control. And then ZenOMAS came in and removed a bunch of code. Um, Stuart removed, added some more labels. Uh, and then after those labels got added, uh, we see other people from the JDK team jumping in to make some changes. Here's some more commits. And then we're, get, we're almost there. We're almost there. So now we're getting down to the bottom. Here's more changes. 
Um, there's one last little little hitch. Uh, so Brad, who actually was just speaking before me about security, said, oh, I learned something about hash map today. That's interesting. So this person is teaching everyone about hash maps. Um, but we need to get a review, a review for security. Because uh, this touches, I looked at java.security.cert, uh, part looks good. Sean Moll needs to check Java XML crypto code. Then Sean said, actually, part of Apache Centorio, uh, that we keep that in sync with the JDK, the code in the JDK. So then Zenomass went and actually contributed a PR to Apache Centorio, Centorio. Uh, to keep that in sync with the JDK code, which is part of the crypto uh, stuff in the platform. And that all happened here with the help of Sean um, Mullen from the security team. And once that was done, it got approved. We could go, you know, in fact, you can review that. I think this might even be it here. If we click on that, we can see the merge code that's part of Centorio XML Security Java. That was merged. Um, a couple of details about that, but nothing too exciting to go through, but that, you know, that's basically like instead of creating a new hash map based off the length, you create a new hash map taking the ceiling of length divided by the magic number of 0 0.75. Very, very exciting stuff. Um, any, in any case, we're basically at the end where uh, Stuart says, go ahead and integrate. And that's what everybody was waiting for. And then ZenOMS got the pleasure of uh, slash integrate. And OpenJDK says, your change uh, is now ready to be sponsored. Stuart then sponsored it um, because NLMAS, I don't think, had the correct role to be able to you know, push it directly to the JDK. We needed a sponsor. Thank you to um, Stuart. And the code was committed. And there you have it. That's the end of that PR. So um, this literally all happened. I mean, if I go to the, the top here. This PR was, uh, uh, da, da, da. well, I can't see the exact dates unless I kind of go through the whole thing. But March 23rd to, what does it say here? April 18th. So like three weeks. And uh, it went in. I mean, I could go. This is just a portion of it. But if you go into the files changed, you can see everything. You know, this is how much of the JDK, the platform it spans. So, you know, this person who I still don't think we, we know personally from the community was able to have an impact across a platform used by 10 million plus developers, runs the world's economy, and um, anybody who upgrades an, uh, their Java version and gets to this code is going to be using stuff that this person contributed, all from that one, that one conversation on the mailing list. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, it really is pretty cool stuff. And I hope that person is wearing it uh, as a badge of honor. In fact, we really need to track this person down and get them uh, something. I, hate, I don't even say t-shirt, because I, I feel like that doesn't even do it justice. Uh, plaque or something. Uh, anyways, what's that? Yeah, ex exactly. Um, we got a YouTube plaque on the Java YouTube channel. And it, yeah, we got 100,000 subscribers. It's plastic. That looks like metal. It's plastic. So just let everybody know. YouTube, you need, I mean, Google, you need to step up your game. OK. And the next one's at a million. Jeez. All right. Um, so the result, I talked about all this here, but uh, changed the specification, contributed to several APIs, test cases, added release notes. You can do this too. Um, it's pretty fun. So oh, yeah, we already went to the PR. So in closing, so these are a bunch of the websites that I've talked about. Of course, openjdk.org is probably your starting point if you want to be a contributor to the platform. Um, Inside Java is another good resource where we try and synthesize some of the material that happens out there in the community. The OpenJDK Developer's Guide, a website that we've talked about, dev.java, uh, the arrival of Java. I need to update that screenshot. Um, our YouTube page that I talked about, we've got about 120,000 subscribers. We're working really hard to get more great material there. Uh, Inside Java podcast. If you're interested in the preview system or preview features, uh, we just released a podcast today with, which, with Alex Buckley, one of the uh, architects in the group. Uh, just another one of the you know many brilliant minds on the team. Um, and I was really excited to do a podcast about preview features with him, uh, and we released that today. Uh, OK, I think that's all of my slides. Um, and then uh, that's it. 
So I, I appreciate everybody coming. I appreciate everybody on the live stream making it through uh, this, this day.